Happy Friday, everyone. Welcome to WatchGuard Security Week in Review, a video podcast dedicated to quickly summarizing the biggest information and network security stories each week and to sharing some practical tips along the way. I'm your host and all-around security geek, Corey Nockreiner, and this is the episode for the week starting November 17th, 2014. I'm going to go quickly this week. Let's start with a continuation of Microsoft Patch Day. Last week was Patch Day, and I told you all about the bulletins, but I also mentioned how Microsoft had delayed two bulletins. Well, this week, in an out-of-cycle release, Microsoft released one of those two bulletins. It was an update to fix a local elevation of privilege vulnerability in all Windows servers, which had to do with the Kerberos Key Distribution Center. Kerberos, of course, is the authentication mechanism that Active Directory uses, and KDC is just the, the ticketing system for Windows Kerberos systems. In any case, this is a pretty big flaw with some caveats. Essentially, if a local attacker that has valid credentials in your Windows domain can send a specially forged Kerberos ticket to your Active Directory server, they can leverage this flaw to gain full domain administrative privileges. That means that have access to every Windows computer on your network. So that is a very, very big deal. Now, of course, in order to exploit this vulnerability, the bad guy already needs credentials in your network. So he needs to have already hijacked someone's machine, gotten credentials, and usually only local people have access to the Active Directory server. So there are mitigating factors, but if a bad guy does use some other attack to break into your network, even if he only gains access to a low privileged account, he could leverage this flaw to gain full access to your, your entire domain. So it is a pretty big deal. If you're a Microsoft administrator that runs runs the Active Directory server, you should go get and apply this patch as quickly as possible. That said, I'd recommend testing this update. Microsoft didn't really say why it was delayed, but I suspect it had something to do with QA for this update. This is a server update, and you don't want your production Active Directory server to have problems. So be sure to update quickly, but test this patch too. By the way, as an aside, since we're talking about patches, this week Google also released a new version of Chrome, Chrome 39. It fixes 42 vulnerabilities, so if you don't already have automatic Chrome updates enabled, you might want to go get the latest version of Chrome as well. For the next story, I just want to talk about a new variant of a well-known botnet or Trojan. Uh, there's a Trojan that's been going around for years that has the code name Citadel. And this is like any typical botnet. It infects your computer. And uh, once it does, it connects back to the attacker through a command and control channel. And the bad guy can do everything from steal banking credentials to turn you into a spammer and all kinds of other things. Anyway, some new research came out this week talking about how a new variant of Citadel is actually targeted targeting password vaults. Remember, whenever I talk about passwords, I recommend you use a password vault. This is where you can store hundreds, thousands of different very secure passwords in one place so that you don't have to remember them, so that everything you log into has a different secure password, but all you have to remember is one master password for the password vault. Long story short, the new Citadel variant seems to, when it infects a, a computer, it seems to look for key pass or password safe, which are two of the more uh, popular open source password vaults out there. And essentially, when it sees that those products are in use, it starts a keylogger uh, in hopes, obviously, for the attacker to capture your master password. Once he has your master password, he could pretty much get the keys to all your other uh, online accounts and passwords, too. So this is nothing to worry too much about. In order for this attack to work, someone already has to take control of your computer. And frankly, if they take control of your computer, they could always be using a keylogger. It's pretty much game over at that point. But it is still very interesting to see the malware authors out there actually specifically targeting password vaults. Anyways, just found this interesting. Most gateway antivirus and other antivirus products catch most variants of Citadel. That said, they do change and repack very quickly. So it's a perfect illustration of why products like APT Blocker, uh, which are sandboxes that can catch zero-day malware, can also help with these new variants that pop 
pop up all the time. For the last story this week, I want to cover something that may not be the biggest security story, but it actually has some interesting ramifications and ethical questions that I want to discuss. And this, of course, is the big hoopla and attack between Anonymous and KKK. Anonymous is, of course, the well-known hacktivist group, and KKK is the racist hate group that's primarily in the U.S. In any case, you probably know what's happening in the U.S. in the town called Ferguson. There was an officer that shot a black gentleman. There's a lot of questions whether it was a, a bad shooting. And this, of course, created a lot of unrest, riots, protests, and, and many other things in this small town. And pretty soon, we're going to hear the result of that hearing on whether or not that officer will be exonerated. In any case, I only bring up Ferguson because a well-known KKK member made a Twitter statement basically saying they would patrol the streets and if there are any riots or protests, they would shoot somebody. So obviously just a horrible, horrible statement. And the anonymous hacktivist group, which remember is no particular entity. This could be anyone in the world. It can actually be many different entities, all kinds of people with different views on different things. But in any case, sometimes they get together for a hacking collective. They started what they call Operation KKK or Op KKK, and they decided to say, we're going to hack you, KKK. And there's some posturing and back and forth. KKK said, we're not scared of uh, silly computer nerds. Meanwhile, Anonymous kind of made them eat their words because Anonymous was able to actually hijack this person's Twitter account as well as hijack another well-known KKK Twitter account. And they also DDoSed many uh, KKK sites, knocking them down for very extended uh, periods of time. So they were able to temporarily shut up the KKK and take over Twitter accounts and actually close them for good. So many people are talking about this as though it's a good thing. And you know what? I don't like the KKK. So it's actually very easy for me to think that it's kind of funny and karmic that the KKK lost this particular battle and had their horrible hate speech Twitter accounts ruined. However, here comes the ethical dilemma. Anonymous hacked. Anonymous broke the law. Anonymous took over an account which required them to somehow steal a password and hijack it, and this is really unauthorized computer access. DDoS attacks are the same. DDoS attacks are breaking the law. So while I may personally in this one case feel like I agree with the activists behind this particular thing, when it comes down to it, they're breaking the law to get their point across. So it's the classic do the ends justify the means? And this is kind of a really hard question. You know, there's all kinds of articles right now kind of applauding Anonymous. But you may forget that sometimes Anonymous does horrible things. You know, sometimes Anonymous might have a, a case where they think a cop did something wrong, and while they're trying to attack that cop, they also dox all his innocent family members. There's also other cases of mob mentality. You know, back uh, when the Boston bombings happened, the Reddit community did something that sounds noble. They wanted to help out, so they wanted to identify the bombers. But in doing so, they actually doxed a number of wrong people, and, and people got hurt. So I don't know if, one, mob mentality is a good thing, and two, it's still breaking the law. As much as I don't like the KKK, and I want people to do every legal action possible to minimize their hate speech, and more importantly, if the KKK themselves ever do anything illegal like shooting innocent folks, they need to be persecuted to the full extent of the law, I'm not sure I can agree with the idea of using illegal means. Where does it stop? This time you might like Anonymous's operation. But when Anonymous decides to go after some business because they feel wrong and you work for that business, is it then okay for them to hack? Anyways, it's a very gray issue. You know, like everybody else, I kind of saw some humor and karmic payback when the KKK got hacked, but I really can't endorse breaking the law and doing unauthorized uh, uh, computer access, taking over someone's account just because you feel you're right. In this particular case, I bet most of the world agrees with Anonymous, but that's not always going to be the situation. So I personally don't really think we should encourage cyber vigilantes. But I'm curious what you think. If you think it might be sometimes okay to use uh, illegal computer access or illegal hacking to do something that's ultimately good, let me know. I'd love to share your comments in the next episode.
Well, that's all this week. Hope you found it interesting. Lots of other stories as usual. The State Department got hacked. There's some interesting new Android malware and lots of other stuff out there. So be sure to check out our blog post associated with this video. I'll put a extra link section there that will have all kinds of other interesting stories. And while we're talking about the blog, be sure to visit blog.watchguard.com. And I recommend you subscribe to it so you get emails when we put up new posts. We do many posts, whether they be security updates, WatchGuard product, information and of course this weekly video so go check that out you can also follow me on twitter i'm at secadept and follow watchguard at watchguard tech and before you leave quick show note next week is the u.s thanksgiving holiday so i'm going to take a break from this weekly video i may or may not post a text version of the weekly summary but don't expect a video next week we'll continue the week after as always thank you for watching and here at watchguard we're rooting for you Thank <laughs> you.